In today's tutorial, let's learn how to do this amazing Peyton's Ice Scarf. This only takes about two hours in order to make the scarf complete. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today you're going to learn how to do my icy scarf and this is actually a really quick pattern. I just got this really inspiration one night and it took me about just over two hours to be able to make this from start to finish. It goes exceptionally fast and we're going to be using Peyton's Ice Yarn today within today's example. Let me tell you a little bit more about this yarn because this yarn is actually kind of unique. So the Peyton's Ice Yarn is a brand new yarn as of 2015 and it's a really neat looking yarn. It looks like that it's hand spun and it's actually got really interesting property, properties to it because when it comes out sometimes it's thick and then sometimes it thinens out. So the machine that's actually doing this is giving a nice variation of a different look. So when you look at the tassels you can see that some of them are kind of thinner and some of it's kind of thicker. It's all depending on uh, basically how the machine goes. This makes it look very homemade and it actually has a really nice appeal to it. It. This is also 30% wool. So that means that this project has a lot of warmth to it. Now you see that there's sparkle in this. This is sparkle without any scratch or irritation. So I love this yarn because of that. So I don't mind the sparkle film. It's actually coming up against my skin because I don't even feel that it's there. So without further ado, let's uh, dive into the project because I have some extra stuff for you. So just for kicks I made a PDF on how the stitches are actually working. So it's really kind of hard to tell how the stitches are here but if you look really carefully you'll see that there's two double crochets and then the next two are just sitting right inside. So when you look at the diagram format you can see that there's two double crochets and the next one just goes right into the space right in between the two. So it makes it nice and compact and it actually makes it really kind of cool. And then so you have the growth of the double crochet and you have a unique look as a result. And so this is a really quick and easy pattern to follow because every row is the same once you get beyond um, the second row right here, row number two. So basically once you get that far you just keep on going and you'll you need three balls of Peyton's Ice Yarn. So what I want you to do is that you're going to make the complete scarf using two balls completely. So just finish off completely two balls and then the final third ball is just all the tassels that you need in order to do it. Of course this is your creativity. If the fringing is not something that you want then you only really need two balls of Peyton's Ice. Again the creativity is up to you. So off camera I'm going to follow the instructions that I provided and there's a link in the more information in order to get that. You're also going to need a size L 8 millimeter uh, crochet hook. People are asking me what this hook is. It's a boy hook and you can find this at a Michael's store if you wish if you like the, the comfort grits. For I love the comfort grits. It just happens to be my thing. So without further ado let's uh, begin the instructions using the, our Peyton's Iced. Let's start off with the slip knot and you can use the same pattern and just change your yarn and hook as long as the yarn and the hook complement each other. So let's just start off with the slip knot. Remember that the first one never counts as one. So as per the instructions it says to chain 15 but before I continue you will notice that in the instructions it says if you'd like to change the size it's in multiple sets of two. So if you want a thicker scarf you won't even do this pattern in an afghan as long as you keep it in sets of two. So you go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two and then it says plus one so at the very end of your chain you'll just add an extra chain. So without further ado let's uh, chain 15 as per the instructions. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So there is almost the length. It's going to be a little bit our width of your scarf. It's about 6 inches wide. Okay let's start our double crochet. So we have to count back to the fifth chain for the very starting one. So we just look at the chains and we count. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and that so I'm just pinching where the fifth one is and I'm going to just double crochet twice into that same chain. So that was 1 and 2. So this is how easy this pattern is. So you're just going to skip one chain. So just skip one, go to the second over and put two more double crochets into that one. So we're establishing the double crochet spots that, and so you're going to put two in that one. Okay so what do you got to do now? You just skip the next chain. So one and go to the second one over again and put two double crochets. So for this particular scarf there's actually a total of 
five of these double crochet groups going across. Skip the next chain and double crochet twice into the next one. So you can see that the ball is changing the thickness as we go. So it provides a very artsy kind of look to the scarf. Skip the next one, double crochet twice into the second one over. Okay, so now that we got that over and done with, so I'm going to skip one and look you have one more stitch after that and so that the very final one is just one double crochet into the final chain. So we're keeping this in line with the actual pattern. Just like so. So this is what it looks like at this point. Let's move up a row and this is row number two. So they're all gonna be the same after this. So this row is the same going all the way down the scarf. So here we go. So we're gonna chain up three. So one, two, and three. And so these are two double crochets in the same one. You wanna play within the space between them. Okay, there's no chain one space. You just gotta separate them. And you can see they're almost like V's and they're working together in groups of two. So in this we're gonna double crochet right in between and we're gonna double crochet twice. So one and two. So this is the new kind of like the V shape going up in this particular row. So we skip over and look to the next one. You see that there's two going into the space in between for two more. So if hopefully the instructions are making sense to you that it's just the two double crochets working in between the spaces. Okay, go to the next group of two and there will be two double crochets there. Okay, go to the next one the next group of two and just go right into the space. Like so. So you're looking for the groups of two. So you got one more before this row is done. And I would count once in a while to make sure you got the no right number of rows just to make sure. So you can see I got one group two, three, four, and five and I told you that there should be five across. If you're ever in sir, just look underneath. So one, two, three, four, and five. So then the final in the turning chain is just a double crochet. So I'm gonna repeat this row one more time even though it's exactly the same of what you just did. So let's turn our work and move up. And this is the last time I'm gonna show you. So one, two, and three, chain three. So you're looking for the groups of two and you're gonna go into the space in between for a double crochet two times. So this makes it all compact to each other. Okay, look for the next group of two. See the yarn is a little bit thinner here. And so this is what makes this scarf really amazing. It's just the transitions between thick and thin. Okay, here's the next one. So the machine uh, does all the spinning for this. So I'm sure they're programming the machine to make it thick and thin. Um, it's just a really kind of a neat look. Okay, here's the next group of two. Just go in between for two. Okay, and the last group of two is here. So right in between for two. Okay, and here's the turning chain. So it's one double crochet into the top of the turning chain to finish. So this is how all you have to just do. Just use up two entire balls and then use the third one for doing the fringe and I'm gonna review how to do fringe next. So for the fringing of this scarf, if you look at the instructions, you'll notice that there was red dots and those are indicators of where the fringe is gonna go and there's six spots on this one. So there's one in the top of the chain, okay, and then there's one in between the two groups and two in between the next, the one in between the next, one in between the next and then the top chain. So that was the top one. So then the base one that you'll see is that it's one in the bottom chain and one in between in between, in between, in between. So it just keeps it in balance with, you, with each other. So it's just a really nice way to do it. So let me show you how to actually make the fringe and that's next. Okay, this is how you make fringe and the length of the fringe is basically up to you. Um, I like the 16 inch lengths uh, more than anything. And so basically I'm going to take a tape measure and just measure 16 inches, okay? So then I would measure it and then I would take my scissors and cut it like so. So once I have my one down, I can, I just leave the tape measure down and then I just take the next string and I find that usually four strands is a really nice fringe. Okay, so just lay it down and I'm getting my four. So the biggest mistake you could ever do in fringe is making it too short. So just be a little bit generous with it 
and you are gonna waste a little bit because you're gonna have to trim it a little bit. So what I wanna do is that I wanna take the yarn and I wanna get one side and line them all up on the edge like so. And I'm gonna just take my hands and just kinda pull it and if there's any imperfections you'll see anything hanging out and I want you to fold it in half and make sure that you can see the loop. So I fold it in half and I keep my finger in between the loop. So now I'm, all I'm just going to do is just grab my project and I insert into anywhere I wanna go. In this case I can insert it on the top here or I can go in the space and I'm just gonna go into a space and I'm gonna put my hook in and I'm gonna put this loop and pull it through. Okay, just pull it through like so and I wanna give it a little bit of slack and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open it up with my fingers and it's just easier just to have my fingers and my thumb just to kind of pull it through like so and all I'm just going to do is tie it. So when you're doing this kind of project you have to watch for one thing. One side of the tassel looks different than the other side. The other one you can see the strings are going across and here you can see that it's being sucked through. So when you're doing the actual edging of any of these uh, of these you have to be conscientious where you want it to go and you have to be consistent. So one side see they're all going across here and the other side they all look like they're being sucked in. So you just have to be consistent especially when you got two sides you wanna make sure that when you're wearing the scarf that they are all are looking in balance. So that's a brief overview on how to do my icy scarf. Enjoy this free pattern. It's actually really easy. If you're looking for a quick project, maybe even for a great gift, it's something kind of unique. There's some great color lines within the Peyton's Ice. This may be the project for you. Till next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. We'll see you.